more electronics on the floor. This time, small transmitters made from crystal oscillator modules. When you're going through electronic bits and pieces, look on the circuit board and see if there's one or more of these. This is a crystal oscillator module. Depending on its frequency, you'll be able to use it as the basis of a low power transmitter for six or two meters. These modules have four pins. If you look underneath, you'll see the three are insulated from the case and one, where my right thumb is, is connected to the case. That is the earth pin. If you flip it around, so the earth pin is on the bottom left, you'll also notice on the top left, the case is a little bit different. It's a sharp corner, as opposed to rounded for all the other corners. This pin is not used. But this one here, the top right, is. That's where the power supply goes. Five volts will drive it. And finally, on the bottom right, is our output pin. The output from these is a square wave, which means it will be rich in harmonics. We'll talk about what you can do about that later. The output power from these is only a few milliwatts, but as we'll demonstrate later, you can still get some decent distances from them. Let's have a look closely at this one. 16.896 megahertz. Initially, you wouldn't think it would be very useful, but multiply it by three and you get around 50.7 megahertz. At least here in Australia, that's in the six meter band. So there's a possible usage there. This one here is 16.381. We'll try this one first and see if we can make a transmitter from it. This is the very basic transmitter. All it does is emit a carrier with no keying. The oscillator module is followed by a double tuned circuit. Here the inductor is in series with the variable capacitor that goes to ground and there is coupling with the second tuned circuit which is on the antenna side. That's a parallel tuned circuit. The purpose of that is to clean up a lot of the harmonics of the oscillator module and select only the desired one on 147 megahertz. If you prefer a circuit diagram, this is it. The 5 volt power supply comes from four 1.2 volt rechargeable batteries. If you want the transmitter to have a unique sound, you can add a few extra parts. Here, there's a flashing LED and two resistors. The flashing LED is in series with a 330 ohm resistor. I've also added a 15 ohm resistor. This works because when the LED is on, there is a small voltage drop. The changing voltage on the oscillator changes slightly the output frequency of it. Although the change in frequency is slight, it's accentuated because we're taking the eighth multiple of the oscillator's frequency. That change in frequency is what you can hear in the background from an SSB receiver. This is about one kilometer distant from the transmitter. I'm just using a vertical dipole. One variant is you can wire a piezo buzzer across the LED. A benefit of that is if you're using an FM receiver as the buzzer causes some modulation to be impressed on the carrier. Note that it's a piezo buzzer. Piezo transducers often look similar to buzzers, but a transducer requires an oscillator circuit to drive it, whereas a buzzer is self-contained. Transmitting voice. Here I've got an LM386 amplify module on the left. It's driven by an electric microphone. Audio is applied across the 15 ohm resistor to modulate the supply of the oscillator module. The result is both amplitude and frequency modulation. Looking at the schematic diagram, it's the same as before, except I've removed the LED and the buzzer. This is the LM386 amplifier module. I've got an electric microphone, which to use with the LM386 
requires an extra resistor to provide a bit of bias for its supply requirement. That is 10k. Audio from the LM386 is applied to the oscillator supply, but there's also a 15 ohm resistor between that point and the 5 volts. I should point out that as the oscillator module is fairly low power, I'd say only a few milliwatts, the output from the LM386 is way too much, unless you've got the audio gain round back. Therefore, it's important that your LM386 module has a volume control near the microphone input. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. VK, three, one, eight, testing. This is receiving with the FT817 in FM mode. Now about 15 centimeters away from the microphone about seven centimeters away from the microphone. This has been a quick look at crystal oscillator modules. Go through yours with a calculator or spreadsheet in hand. Multiply their frequencies and see which ones will get you inside an amateur band. You may find some oscillator modules operate directly on HF. 14.286 megahertz is one that I've seen. Another is 3.686 MHz. Those modules could be useful either for QRP transmitter experiments like we've done here, or with an amplifier or two added for more serious power. There's also the potential of transmitting double sideband with a balance modulator added after the oscillator module. Heard a term on the air you don't understand the meaning of? That's where you need the Illustrated International Ham Radio Dictionary. Just released, it's available as an ebook and in some countries in paperback as well. For more information, visit my website vk3ye.com or search Ham Radio Dictionary on Amazon.